everyone, Bree here from SG Actuarial, and in today's video, we're talking all about actuarial exams and what you can expect in the future. So if you've already passed an actuarial exam, you're probably wondering, like, do the exams get harder? Is there much support for the exams in the future? Um, how long are they going to take for you to pass all of them? And will you be able to fit this into your life down the road? These are really, really good questions to be asking yourself because you want to make sure that this career is actually sustainable for you. It's something that you can do in the long term. This isn't a career that you can go into and pass everything in two years and be done with it. It's something that's going to take you years. So you have to make sure that you are ready for that. So if that interests you, you're going to love this video. And if you are one of those people that have passed an actuarial exam, you're already in the process of becoming an actuary, or you're considering it, make sure you subscribe to the channel because that's all we talk about here. We just talk about actuarial stuff and you're going to love it. You're going to learn so, so much. And if you've passed an exam, let me know down in the comments. I love to hear about the success that you guys are having. And even if you haven't, let me know when you're planning to take your first exam. I would love to know that. So let's get into this video. First off, how long is it going to take for you to pass all the actuarial exams? So if you want to work in Canada or the US, there are 10 exams that you're going to have to pass in order to become a fully qualified actuary. And that means that you're a fellow. It takes 10 exams, you have to pass them all. And for most people, that takes about five to 10 years to accomplish. These exams are tough. So yeah, like I said, they're not something that you can go into and study for a couple of years and be done with them. They're going to take you a long time to pass. Some people are just that type. They want to just get this over with, go through all the exams, pass them as quickly as possible. And for those people, they're probably going to be on the lower end of this range. So they might take four or five years to pass the exams. Whereas other people, they have other things going on in their life. They're studying for the exams at the same time as they're working, raising families and just living life. And those people might wanna take studying at a slower pace, which is totally fine. Just give them so, giving themselves some time to relax and refresh between each exam. That's totally fine. But those people tend to take longer to pass the exams just because they're not um, rushing it. They're not rushing the, pro the process and they just wanna get them done, but at a slower pace. So those people tend to take longer, 10 years, maybe even more, and that's totally fine. Some people never finish all the exams, and we will talk about that a little later as well. It is important to know, though, that some employers do require that you pass exams within a certain time frame. So when I was working in my actuarial position, the company actually had a certain time frame. I think it was one and a half years or maybe two years where you had to pass an exam. So for example, if I passed one exam, then the clock would start ticking again for the next exam. I'd have to pass another exam within the next one and a half years or two years. So some companies do have a program like that where you have to keep passing exams, whereas other companies, they're just going to be a bit more lenient. They don't really care how often you pass exams. They just want you to continue working on them. Some companies want that. Others don't even care if you continue working on them. Really, those are the kinds of things that you are going to have to take into consideration too when you're de you're deciding whether the career is right for you, but also trying to figure out if this is really going to fit into your life long term. And again, you don't need to rush. You could do maybe one exam a year. If you did one exam a year, you could be potentially done them in about 10 years or so. Uh, you have to account for failing and stuff too. Um, actuarial exams are difficult and people fail them all the time. So you have to definitely account for that. But taking one exam or passing one exam per year is definitely feasible. And then you will be done them all in about 10 years. Next, the question is, will this be able to fit into your life down the road? Is this something sustainable for you? Well, actuarial exams, they might fit into your life now, but you have to be thinking about the future. Think about where you want your life to go and what you want it to be like. Maybe you're planning on having a family. And if that's the situation that you're in, then it might be more difficult for you to fit in the studying that you need to in order to pass actuarial exams. Or maybe you have some hobbies that you want to continue to do throughout your whole life. And studying for actuarial exams is just going to take too much time away from those hobbies. There are so many things that I'm sure you want for your future life. And you just have to consider now whether actuarial exams are really going to fit into those. 
So here's some guidance around what you can expect. Of course, I can't say whether it's going to fit into your life down the road or not, but if you know what to expect, then at least you can try to figure that out for yourself. So when you are working in an actuarial position, you can expect to be working for about 35 to 40 hours per week. Also take into consideration how much time it might take you to commute. So if you are in a city where there are lots of insurance companies and you're fairly certain that you're going to get hired close to home, then that's great. But some people commute one hour or two hours a day because they decide to live in a, a city that's further away from a lot of the jobs. And that's totally fine too. It's just important that you take into consideration the time it might take to commute. With everything going on in the world right now, maybe uh, working from home is going to be more and more common once we get through everything, but also you're probably going to have to go into the office occasionally anyway. So just take that into consideration when you're deciding. Um, in terms of the time you need to spend studying, you can count on about an average, and I say average here, of about five to 15 hours per week. So that doesn't mean that you have to study five to 15 hours every single week because a lot of the time you're going to spend more time studying as, exams, as your exam gets closer. So you might be spending 20, 25, maybe 30 hours per week studying as an exam is getting closer. And then in other weeks of the year, you might spend no time studying at all because you don't have an exam coming up. So this is what I say, this is why I say average about five to 15 hours per week. So consider in your schedule now and how you want your life to look in the future, is that amount of time spent studying something that's going to be feasible for you or not? Um, also do remember that this is temporary. So maybe you just wanna pass actuarial exams really quickly right now so that you don't have to spend any time studying in the future when you maybe have a family or you get into different hobbies and stuff like that. Um, and then that means that you can forget about studying it at all because it's only temporary. So um, yeah, once you pass actuarial exams, there's only a few things you'll have to do to continue to upkeep your, uh, your associateship and stuff like that. But those things don't really take a lot of time, maybe one hour a week on average, I would say. So exams is really going to be the big thing to consider. And then after that, you're pretty much set. Is there support for the later exams? This is a really good question because if you've started studying for an actuarial exam now, or you've considered taking one soon, you probably know that there is lots of support for actuarial exams. There's study materials available so that you can learn all the topics on the exam. There are tutors that are fairly easy to find. You can join programs like my study strategy program where I show you exactly what to do every single day, plus provide accountability. So there are tons and tons of resources out there to help you pass exams. But you may be surprised that all the support is not available in the later exams. So there still is support for every single exam, but as you start taking higher and higher level exams, you're going to notice that there just aren't as many options available. Some programs aren't available at all anymore. Uh, tutors are harder to find. So in general, as you do harder exams, it's going to be more difficult to find the support that you need. For example, the study strategy program too, that's my program where I help people and guide them step-by-step step on how to prepare. We only help with exam P, FM, and IFM, the first three actuarial exams. So after that, members of my, that program are kind of left to take what they've learned in the program and do it their, themselves for later exams. And that can be a big transition. So there is support for every single exam. There are study materials for every single exam, but there just usually aren't as many options. And you might find for some exams, the quality just isn't as good as you're used to for the earlier exams. Next question is, do the exams get harder as you go? So there are 10 exams in total, like we talked about, and the first two exams are exam P and FM. For most people, those are the two easiest exams, which is why they are the first two exams. As you go from there, the exams do tend to get more difficult. Many people even notice a big jump in difficulty when they start studying for exam IFM, which is the third exam. The, the material there is much more uh, complicated. There are harder concepts and stuff to grasp. 
Plus, there's just a lot more material that you need to know for that exam. So that's why IFM, you just see that big jump there. And then as you keep on going, you're going to notice the same trend. Every single exam is going to be a little harder than the one before it. Now, once you reach associateship, which means you've passed seven exams, you're going to notice a really, really, really big jump in difficulty because not only do the exams get more difficult, but the whole thing that you're used to, the whole type of exam that you're used to before, it kind of goes out the window. All of a sudden, exams become more about memorization. They become less about math. They become more about understanding insurance concepts and topics and how insurance works and all that sort of stuff that you didn't really need to know in order to pass the first seven exams. So for many people, they find the actuarial exams after associateship much more difficult. And I was in that boat. I actually have something for you here. It's my study materials when I was studying for my my eighth exam. So this is the one after associateship. Uh, so I had just finished all my associateship level exams, then started studying for this one. And this is what I got. I got a study material full of so, so, so many different notes. And these topics cover things like how different insurance products work. They cover um, marketing insurance. They cover what actuaries do day to day in their different roles and all that sort of stuff. So having to memorize all of this, it was a huge, huge task and it's basically impossible to memorize it all. So you never know what kind of questions you're going to be asked because they don't really give you sample questions like they do for the earlier exams. So you just kind of have to go off of all the study material providers. They, they do create questions for you to practice with but you just never know what you're going to be asked. There's so much material in here that it's impossible to know what you should focus your time on and all that sort of stuff. So these kinds of exams, the ones after associateship, they do get a lot more difficult and they're completely different than what you're used to. So the answer is yes, actuarial exams do get harder. What I did find though is that having experience in an insurance company, several years of experience, really helped on this level of exam because like I said, these exams are based all around how insurance works and all the different insurance terminology and theories and stuff like that. So since I had spent lots of time working in an insurance company already, I generally had a, a good idea of how these things worked. So that made it a lot easier than it would have been if I didn't have any of that background knowledge. Last question, can you stop taking actuarial exams? And the answer is yes, you can. Now, we talked a little bit about this before. Some companies want to see that you're continually making progress. They have strict time frames where you have to pass an exam every one year, every two years or something like that. And if you don't, then you risk losing your job. So those types of companies might not be okay with you stopping taking actuarial exams. Whereas other companies that aren't so strict about passing exams, those types of companies will be more okay with you just stopping taking the exams. I would recommend though that you at least reach associateship level. So that means pass seven exams, do the modules that you need to, all that sort of stuff so that you get your associateship designation. And that's just really going to show for all the hard work you've done. It's going to allow you to have a designation proving everything that you've done in the past. And just that designation alone is going to be more attractive to employers, other employers outside of your current employer, um, what, compared to just having a whole bunch of different exams and modules passed. So I do highly recommend you at least get your associate degree. However, I recommend you go into the actuarial career assuming that you're going to reach fellowship. Don't go into it thinking that you'll just stop an associateship level because that's just limiting yourself. And since you don't know whether an employer, a specific employer is going to care whether you stop taking actuarial exams or not, it's just a bit more difficult to um, guarantee the stability of your job if you are planning to stop. And some, some employers, they won't even hire someone that's not going to planning to continue taking the exams. So it's just something to consider. Um, if you do stop taking actuarial exams, then you do have to be aware that you're also going to be limiting the salary that you can get. So 
the salaries that we talked about, I actually did a salary video not long ago. I'll link to it down below in the description. But the salaries there, they're assuming that you go all the way up to fellowship. And that's when you see the big, big salary increases once you get into the fellowship or once you get fellowship and continue moving up the corporate ladder into higher and higher level positions. Usually someone with an associate degree that stops the exams partway through, they're not going to have the opportunity to advance as high. So it's really going to limit your salary and your potential for advancement. Okay. That is all for today's video. If you are considering studying for an actuarial exam or you've already started, or maybe you failed and you just want some help, I am here for you. I have an amazing program called the Study Strategy Program where my team and I help create an entire study schedule for you so you know exactly what to do every single day. You don't have to worry about whether you're doing the right things in the right order at all. We monitor your progress to make sure that you are always doing the tasks that are most beneficial for you because as you go through different tasks that we have assigned for you, we see how you're doing and then we adjust your schedule as you go so that we can be sure that you're always doing the tasks that are going to best help you in any situation. We also do accountability check-ins to help you stay on track and we have a $250 pass guarantee. So if you want to check out the study strategy program, I would love to work with you. Go check it out down in the comments or the description, actually, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.